Call him Doug Talker. Call him Doug Talker. All right. I'd like to call this evening's public safety committee meeting to order. Thank you. Uh, for the month of April, we responded to 731 calls of police service, made 73 arrests, 70 adults, 3 juveniles, issued 30 citations. Um, 20 arrests so far have been made in the illegal dumping, 40 cars have been towed. Uh, we're still working on the RFP for um, the junk removal. Only two contractors submitted, so that'll be going through. On the fire end of things, we responded 19 calls. Um, our numbers this year versus last year are down about 20, so that's good. Um, we're helping the water plant out with uh, some OSHA stuff on their confined space. And also, uh, Deputy Director Phelps has been teaching at the police academy um, in regards to our current cadets and doing some recruiting, possibly looking for more. Um, uh, Personnel-wise, uh, Sergeant Kyles has put in his retirement paperwork, so he's retiring this month, um, 25 years with the city. Uh, we have a detective that's stepping out of the detective bureau, going back to road patrol, so that'll happen in June. Um, Cadet Kinsler, the one we have in the academy right now, is uh, one of the top students in the class. He graduates May 17th, and he'll start his field training after that. And then Cameron Stortz, who's been working in records, he starts fire school in June. And then Cadet Stortz and Cadet Kuhn, who's been working in the firehouse for the last year, start the police academy in August. So uh, these guys, the guys during the month of April did several, well, nine hours total of criminal and constitutional law refreshing. And our app is almost done. Um, there's a couple little and, uh, Apple things that we have to work out. Our new fire engine's being built. If you look, I think it's on the Facebook page now, there's some pieces and parts. Um, the project started, so the new engine should be here probably early August. They build it in Florida and then drive it up to us. Um, Equipment-wise, nothing to report. Uh, we had a busy month trying to put together stuff for Blossom Time and a few other summer events. And we, um, I'm getting ready to start the grant cycles again for DOJ and a few other things. And we're waiting to hear back on a firefighting grant that we put in for. Question. Um, so, with the young man, that, uh, so Director Phelps, you say he's teaching at the uh, academy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is he teaching other cadets or just um, ours? He's teaching all of them. For all of them. Yep. Oh, wonderful. Uh, um, the young man that will be graduating, will he be coming in for the count once he graduates to introduce himself? Or uh, we actually brought he him through him? here. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you were on the committee then or not, but we brought him through once. I'm, I'm sure that once he graduates, we'll bring him through. Um, He's, he's done very well, uh, despite his age, yeah. he's very mature. Uh, he doesn't look like he's as young as he is, but he's in the top of his class, so he's doing very well. Um, you said calls were down to, for, to 20 calls for this time of year, so you mean this particular month? or? Yeah, this month, this April of 19 versus April of 18, we had 20 less fire calls for the month. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. I'd like to know if um, if the sheriff and the state men are going to be in the city this summer like they were. I didn't see anywhere where Cornerstone paid for their overtime, so I I don't know. So I need to. Are so they coming in regards to the sheriff's department, I don't believe that will be. I don't think anybody's paying anything extra for overtime for them. Um, the state may be around because we're still classified by the governor as a secure city, mm -hmm. uh, which brings us some additional help and attention as needed. Um, the other secure cities are like Saginaw, Pontiac, uh, Detroit, that sort of thing. So uh, we don't know yet if there'll be any additional patrols and cars. Um, the Secure Cities program is what allows us to help, like our detective bureau. We have three detectives from the state that supplement and work with our detectives to help solve cases. So I don't know if what the state's plans are. I know the, the academy just graduated 100 and some troopers, and they've assigned 15 to the Niles Post, so we may see an increase. Um, you may see an increase countywide, though, because that's 15 new troops 
in the county that we didn't have this time last year. Are, are you having any communication problems with the state police and how they, do you, do you know what they're doing in the city? Um, they let us know generally before it happened. Um, but you know, with their, with their new people in the system, um, they're still in their field training. So we don't exactly know when they'll come out of that. Uh, the, the post commander in Niles, who covers this area, he's, he's pretty uh, open with us and lets us know. So. Okay, thank you. Can you speak in the mic, please? So, like this weekend, um, that shooting was right about four ish, five ish. Um, so, the whole shift of four was there. We called in our night shift early to take the calls in the streets while they process that scene. Um, when we get those major events, we will get, we do get help from the county and state depending on who's available. Uh, it just depends on who's available and where. strategy this uh, uh, since I know it's getting warmer and you're starting to get to the gatherings and there there's a few things that we're working on some of it we can talk about some of it we don't really want to get into just yet okay. uh, one of the big things that we're working on right now is actually trying to <coughs> identify um, the the juvenile gang structure that we have um, the second to last shooting that happened about a month ago that was actually uh, juvenile gang related. Um, so we've been working with the schools, the, the security officers at the school, trying to identify people and then helping the school to identify them and you know hit these kids early and say, hey, listen, you know, talk to them, go right to their house, talk to them, talk to their parents. Um, you know, between that the dumping stuff and we got a lot of high visi high visibility patrol going on um, you know we have a couple other things that we're going to work in through the summer uh, but right now that's one of our biggest issues one of the other things that we're starting to see is an uptick in um, ATVs golf carts and those types of vehicles on the roadway which are not allowed um, so if, you know we're gonna be working towards some enforcement on that as well Um, I heard Officer Clark mention that he's been seeing a lot of ATVs and golf carts on the, in Benton Harbor. Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. Um, can we, with the weather getting nicer and the children are, are youth and the children are about to be out of school, we are very aware of the try to get together on one accord with the state and the county. I see more stops in our community by the state and county than I do our own officers. Is there a reason for that? You know, we, we can't tell the sheriff or the state police what they can and can't do. Okay. I, I, and um, granted, I, I understand that because that's the problem. They're in our community just operating at will, at large, as they please. It's something that we can do moving forward to talk to the governor, get with them all, and, and have a conversation in a nice, peaceful manner about respect, expecting respect. We expect for the youth and, and the people in the community to respect our officers. It goes both ways. That's the purpose of ALPAC. And I want to see that continue to grow. And it's going to take I think communication. Yeah, definitely communication is the uh, uh, way to go. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
way to go. Uh, and like the, uh, Deputy Director Clark said, you know, we are in the uh, county of Maine and the state of Michigan, so you know, they do have jurisdiction, but it should be some type of uh, you know, operating agreement that uh, we can come up with. So uh, I'm sure you know, through some type of communications and uh, meetings that we should come up with something. In the metric report, uh, we've gone over it actually before you got here, sir. Okay, I have a question about um, just one about oh, no, no. Go ahead. sure. Okay. Next time, the, the uh, trash. The next item on the oh. agenda, yep. Okay, so last month, um, I was asked to do a comparison of what it would be in-house versus what we currently have. And just what you have, I think you, everyone has one in front of you, is a, is a quick uh, summation of, of what, was, um, what we're looking at. Currently, we pay $17.65 um, a unit for 2,405 units in the city of Ben Harbor. That equates to about $510,000 a year for our trash collection and, and removal, uh, which includes both uh, lawn debris and household waste. If we were to bring it in-house, um, the if you look at the side where it says in-house costs, the annual cost up top are things that are going to go, go on every year regardless. The bottom part of it is what we would have to purchase in addition to in our first year with uh, in addition to what these costs are. So if you look at it comparatively, like I said, this is a rough estimate because you don't get into the, the real weeds of it. You're talking about $1.65 savings over a month per month for what we would what we're paying currently and what we would be paying going forward. So the um, the biggest one that, that is out there is the tipping fees, which are what we have, would have to pay to dispose of what we have at the at the landfill. Uh, personnel costs, equipment costs, fuel costs, repair and maintenance costs, and like I said, if you purchase the cans that uh, after we would we were um, that I believe that we would need. Which are the 96 gallon cans? They're about $100, $110 a shot. So you have to purchase 2,400 of them. So what that would be is the 28 is the $280,000. But then also what you would have to then roll into the other one up top would be replacement of cans once if something got damaged or somebody stole one or they got just wear and tear. So that number you can't quantify because you don't know what you would have to be repaid, you would have to replace on an annual basis. So again, if you just took the 435, 700 divided by the 2405 can, the 2405 units, residents that we have that are that, um, households that we have, and then also by the 12 months, you get an average cost of about $16 a month. Which is, like you say, about a dollar savings. Right? Dollar sixty-five. Yep. Dollar sixty-five. Yep. Um, but we we got we got control of that. Correct. That would be basically doing it house. Like I said, it, it doesn't include insurance costs. Again, rough estimates. Right. Wow. Yeah, we would. It would be an in-house thing, and we would have control over. There, there are two landfills here. One, and the one I got the information from was Orchard Hill, which is in Water Belief. Okay. There's one in Buchanan who will, won't give me or have it, hasn't given me a cost. But this is just if we used them. Okay. Is there one in All Clear as well? Because I heard is there something in All Clear that people use? I don't believe there's one in All Clear. Like I said, I know there's one in Buchanan. I know there's one in um, in Water Belief. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think it is a small one. 
Yeah. yeah, I think a commercial size when it would take, you know, the amount of uh, household waste that you would be generating. And I, I think even, you know, with these ballpark figures, uh, you know, that at some point, uh, especially with all the situation we had with the, you know, garbage contracts back and forth, that uh, somehow, you know, I think we need to start looking at bringing it back. Um, but also, I think, you know, we need to go some steps further with uh, uh, some recycling uh, programs that would uh, probably help reduce, yeah. reduce the uh, tipping fees. Correct. Uh, and maybe uh, generate a little bit to offset some of the costs. So, I mean, it's still some work to be done. And the other thing it doesn't take into account is what you would charge, for example, for large pickups. That's not factored in here. That's just, that's a number that you would have to determine. Would it be $5, would it be $10 based on what size it was? You know, those are numbers, again, that you, that really, you can't quantify right now. Then you, uh, I guess you also look at the, uh, what is the, how much we pay a month for the uh, dumpsters at Public Works? Correct. thousand dollars a year total. Yeah. So with the um, landfill, is there any land that the city owns that we could actually use to dump some items to uh, use as a landfill that's not that's still contaminated that we could actually use? Is there uh, any property that the city has that we could put some items if we were to do this? So you can't you can't dispose of household waste dumping it on just uh, uh, the ground. Now you could do yard waste. If you had, if you wanted to do that, that you could do a compost, right. that. But you can't do household waste. You would have to get a landfill to get that, to remove that. I think, I think even with the, doing the yard waste would be a, uh, somewhat of a cost savings too. Right, right now that yard waste is going, going to, to the landfill. The landfill. Right. Possibly recycle it into some, some type of useful, you know, byproduct or something. Yep. Uh, Thank you. Um, <coughs> two things. I just heard um, City Manager Watson through the chair mention something about fifty thousand for the dumpsters at at Public Works. When in fact, the Director of Public Safety said it was a hundred thousand. Is either one or the other. Or it was one hundred. It was one hundred fifty thousand over the last three but years. I'm, I'm in total agreement. It's trying to bring it back in house. Mm -hmm. As long as we can employ more than two or three people. Um, and thank you, Commissioner Henderson. Um, maybe get more traction now. That more than one person has their sight on some property where we can put leaves in the bags that dissolve themselves within the earth. Actually, it could become a, 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 a worm farm. For fishing. We stay by all this water. And some things just make sense. I think I brought that through planning economic development probably two or three times. Because if the city of South Bend can use some empty property that their city owns, with all the empty lots we have, especially down there off Riverside. We don't own a lot off Riverside, Commissioner. I, 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 we own some property down there? We own two. We, well, own, we own some of them. No, what no, I'm saying. But what you got down there is where the, the lift station is, okay. as well as where the boat launch is. Okay. Those are ours. Okay. Everything else is privately owned. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, can we do something to hold those privately owned properties? accountable for the dumping that's on their property. I mean, we've been doing it up here in the city. We do, on the private ones down there. But they haven't been cleaned up and haven't been down in a while. We've cleaned that up several times. Okay. But what happens is, where they dump at is typically in the middle of the road. Yeah, it's, right. it's right in the middle of the road. down in a while, but yeah. you could drive through. You, yeah, when we go down there and clean it up, they, oh, you're, okay. you're absolutely right. Okay, but still, I even mentioned 
where I really wouldn't want to, down in the valley, Valley Drive. I mean, just for leaves, as long as it doesn't have trash and paper in it. So I mean, because that, that's a waste, and it would cost, it would save us if we bring it back in house as well. Yeah, if you had, if you went with a, so this assumes three people because the, 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 the machinery that you, is you being utilized mm -hmm. would be one that has the arm on it that would then take the cans and dump it versus dumping it off the back of a truck. But it also the truck also has a back part of it that you can load large items into. Mm -hmm. So you get the best best of both worlds out of it. Because, you know, honestly, having people ride around on the back of a truck is kind of scary and lined up from a lot of But I see it in other communities. I still see it in other communities across America. Yeah. I, yeah. I, maybe not a whole lot of them, and maybe some have larger populations than, than are yeah. less than 10. But they still, you know, maybe, and, and maybe, some, yeah. And some of them are so friendly that they, you know, get to know the little people in the community that like to see the, the truck coming. Like like they used to the fireman. <laughs> <laughs> Sparky and all that. I don't think I, thank you. I don't think I heard do we have a place that we could start looking at for trash, I mean for waste. For yard waste, for yard waste. We've, we've got a number of, of lots that, again, are mostly residential. Um, there is one spot that is out by the airport mm. that the city owns jointly with other entities. Mm. Who are they? Uh, Benton Charter Township, St. Joe City. Is that where they dump the sludge? Used to dump? Yeah. No, it used to be the old, it used to be a landfill. From the dredge. Yeah, it's uh, it's the North Northwest Berrien Landfill Association. What yeah, what we would have to figure out is if, from the standpoint, because that I do know that is contaminated. How would you, you know, is there a way to bear, put a barrier in between what's contaminated and then what? Because it's it is a landfill area. Um, but beyond that, getting anything that is large enough. We have to put some things together, some some properties together, or try to acquire some and make a swap, potentially, uh, depending on where we want to put it in. So is this property part of the airport? Mm -hmm. And why is Benton Township? Because back in when the city had trash collection, there was an agreement between the three communities that they purchased a landfill because all the landfills, the stuff was being dumped out there. That has now since been defunct and moved to Water Relief. However, there is still the property that exists and it's jointly owned, it's owned by the three municipalities. Well, it's, it's all, it's an equal chair for all of them. Yeah. So it's contaminated. Yes, ma'am. At one point, they were looking to sell it uh, as part of the industrial park out there for parking, but they would not, the persons who were looking to buy it did not want to assume to do care responsibilities if they went along with it, so they didn't mess with it. So it sits there, and... How contaminated is it? Enough for the DEQ to have a real good stranglehold on it and tell you anytime you get ready to do anything on it, you need to make sure people understand and do care and they will. It's, some, it's very contaminated because, again, you were dumping everything out there at that time. Yeah. How long has it been dumped? Dumping. Ten, how ten, long? Ten years, 20 years? I'm sorry, how long? You said I'm going what was the last dumping out there? Oh, it's been boy. 10, it's years? been probably 40. 30 plus years. That that's been that that's been sitting dormant. You know, one time too, they were dumping some of the sludge from the sewage plant out there. Yeah. They did, well, they were dumping the dredgings that came out of the river. Okay. End up going out toward uh, going out to the airport, and it was part of the extension of the runway that they did. So yeah, they that got, wasn't contaminated. 
No, that was that was not contemptuous, as, as Commissioner Adams said. That was an agreement that uh, then Director Sherwood's worked out with the Army Corps engineers to basically infill what was going to be extended for the um, airport runway. Years ago, down to where the uh, old all faith was off ways, that the building they used to be a dump down there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the city. Mm -hmm. For years. Yeah. Before I forget, just fifteen seconds. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Can we? Can what can we do to get some of that? Uh, um, First of all, dre dredging stuff to put uh, all out. Commissioner Henry, you yield. Just mm -hmm. yeah, because she been a forgot. All right. <laughs> can you say that again? Though? Then again, that, um, the dredging material that um, I don't know if any is going on now because the board has been um, exonerated. Um, the Harbor Authority no longer exists. But I think for Shogun they did put a board, a committee or something together. Actually, they did not. Did not what? They, there was, the, the Harbor Authority that used to exist at the county level uh -huh. got got disbanded, and the responsibility went to the three municipalities. Right, right, right. right. So they didn't put... Okay, right, right, right. But yeah. up in, uh, I think our congressman has been still, uh, I think he set aside some funding for another dredging that might be coming up, if we can yeah. touch base with them and see if we can... Congressman, get... Yeah, Congressman Upton has been very... Um, instrumental. Instrumental in yeah, getting yeah. that yeah. dredging done and continues yeah. to get it done. Um, one of the issues right now is as you know, there's not an issue with dredging because right. the levels are so high. Yeah, yeah. And according to the, uh, the, the, the DEQ, that the levels are going to rise some more. Okay, but I, yeah. I just said so, that to yeah. say, can we keep our eyes open for our when it When it happens, yeah, yeah. because they're not scheduling any dredging now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because that stuff is, is more useful than a lot of people know. All right, Commissioner Henry, you want to finish up now? Get the here. Thank you. Um, well, that's some information that I didn't have, and I appreciate it. Um, and the recycling. Thank you for mentioning that again. It's a shame that we're just mentioning it every once in a while, mm -hmm. because it is something that can help us, and, and it is an economic development tool for our people. Uh, ask Mr. Watson how many personnel is included in that $85,000? That's three people. Three people, yes, a driver and two yes, workers. Yes, mm -hmm. that's their, that's the cost of them working 30 hours a week, uh, 52, 52 weeks out the year, and uh, their fringes, because you have to pay, with them technically being part-time, you still pay unemployment insurance. And um, Social Security, yeah, Spike and and, and, uh, and unemployment, workman's comp. I'm sorry, workman's comp and and, and, and uh, unemployment. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, Hi, um, my name is Andy Williams, and um, as we were talking, I'm the operating officer for Mosaic. As Commissioner Adams, yes, right. sorry, as Commissioner Adams was um, talking about the rubbish and stuff like that, I just wanted to kind of come and clarify, you know, or make a statement um, about, I'm sure, social media and everything else, everything is out there, um, but. Um, Commissioner Adams, she was saying, you know, is there land that where um, leaves and all that stuff can be put? And um, so what Ben Harbor Area Schools had on their plate is that I guess they own the river, the Riverview, um, River Valley, and they have hired us for um, Mosaic Property Services for all of their land care. And when the arrest was made, I wish it had been clarified that we wasn't dumping trash, we wasn't dumping couches or anything like that. It was the grass clippings from the school on the property that they specified, which is in a written letter from the COO from the Ben Harbor Area Schools. Down in Valley Drive, you said? Yes, ma'am. Oh, really? And that's where the arrest was made. 
And now, I do want to clarify all the rubbish that is down there, the couches, the jacuzzi, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mosaic is hired to clean that up for the uh, school system mm -hmm. because yeah. it's so much stuff down there. So as a member of this community, I was born, raised here, moved away for three months, didn't like it in Lansing, came back here, started my career here in Ben Harbor, have bought property, I own property here in Ben Harbor, I own houses in Ben Harbor as a young black woman. It's, it, 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 it was so hard for me yesterday, and I'm just speaking on me. It was so hard for when I sit on the back end to know exactly what it was, and I feel that it should have been clarified that we were not damaging the city, but it's the same thing that you just- Dumping is dumping though. It, it is dumping, yeah. but you yeah. remind, remind for what we just was talking about, a property that we can dump leaves yeah. and you know stuff like that, and that's what it was. That's yeah. what it was done with permission. So yeah. Mosaic didn't feel. I will say we would. I don't feel that we we felt like we were doing anything wrong. If and I don't. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. If my guys or if anybody. Because I want, my, I want my city beautiful, just like everybody in this room. If we're dumping couches and we're dumping all this stuff, now I, stay, I, I own a house over in that area by Valley View. And I know that that has been a problem area right there off of Pickens. I know, I know it's been a problem area. Um, if we're doing that, no, it ain't no tap on the wrist. Yes, send us to jail. Do what we have to do. Make us do the community service. Yeah. Make us do that. But when we're doing things that was in writing that was not that something as, and I always get the word, I'm a country girl, degradable or digradable, whatever, it's, it was gonna go away. Mm -hmm. That's something totally different than what it was made out to be, that we were dumped in trash. And I wish Michael was in here too. Mm -hmm. Is that the person that was doing So, was I, Michael, Michael Hoyer, 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 whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I wish he was in Confucius. here. Confucius. And so, Confucius. when, when, and Michael knows exactly who I am. All so the top that's probably why he left. One person got the mic. <laughs> but I, you know, so I, I, I just wish that the city, because it's so many people. I, my phone, and I, and this is a public safety meeting. My phone has been blowing up so much just by the people, and it's not, it's not about Mosaic. And I, I'm sorry, Officer Clark, that I'm, I'm, you know, that I, we have, I'm separating black and white. Mosaic is ran by two black people that have in place that we are 96 of our peeps 96 percent of our people that come through our city residents that are getting jobs that is able to pay this one percent that this, that we that we have in the city or half percent whichever one it is to help beautify our city to help do the things that we need to do you know no one else has stepped up to do that type of thing you know and i just feel that the the type of um Defacement that we have had just over these past couple of days is wrong. Okay. And I, if you all want a copy of this letter, I do have a copy of the letter from the CEO. How long have you worked for Mosaic? I've been with Mosaic since 2014. Oh, thank you for uh, thank you. title is um, Chief Operating Officer. You were there at, in the beginning as a Chief Operating Officer? No, ma'am, I was not. Okay. Excuse me, uh, can we go through the chair here now? We ain't got no yeah. side meetings here now. <laughs> And I'm happy to meet with anybody that wants to meet with me for me to explain exactly what the, the breakdown of Mosaic is and how it is. Who own, Mosaic is ran by or it's not, it's not owned by Overflow. Um, just to give the breakdown of what it is. No, I wasn't there in 2009, but I'm willing to meet with any and each one of you to give you the breakdown and so let you in on um, whatever it is that you need to know. Thank but you. I do feel that it, it should be clarified because right now yeah. what's out there is we were dumping trash. Now, yeah. I, I do understand yeah. dumping is dumping, dumping period. but yeah. we just talked about a property in the city <laughs> that leaves can be dumped but, and stuff can be, you know, so I understand that. Yeah. So, okay. you know, well, I chair. Okay, thank you. Through the chair, something yeah. like that has to be done by ordinance to allow it, whether yeah. a person has Did permission or not. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Am I right? You, um, yeah. Chair? Give it to the clerk. Um, give one to the clerk so she can share it with the rest of I, I, I just learned something else. 
um, <coughs> that if 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 other items have shown up on oh, Valley nice. Drive <laughs> after Benton Harbor cleaned it up, including some of the stuff that they helped to dump, they were locked on each end. Who's been leaving it unlocked where a vehicle can get through? So who has I, a key? Uh, they destroyed it by running Sorry. into it. They ran into the fence and, and tore it up. Somebody ran into the fence. Yeah. There was a fence that was put there at the at right at where Schultz comes into Valley Drive. But they he ran over it. Through the chair. But see, we would know who that was if we had to do things in an orderly fashion, like cameras. One on the school to see the comes to's and fro's and on the other end, even if it was one of the residents or the business. One of those businesses have a camera. But I do remember the, the commission voted down cameras because we Please, wanted no, we cameras didn't. to be put certain place. So the commission, no, when it was brought to us through, through the public oh, safety director, oh, they were going to put cameras camera. certain places, and people had a problem with spying. Said so the cameras could see in wrong places, and if that was last year, was, that we voted on. Else. That we voted, that we voted it, voted it down. I asked Mr. Else. Chief McGinnis about the cameras. He it said, Commissioner else. already used the grant, so I can't go back and use that grant for that. That's what he told me. Well, true we voted it down. Mr. Mr. Jerry, mm -hmm. truth is true. your hand up for a question. <laughs> truth is true. Jerry, look like you were I don't forgot what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was up there. Like, uh, okay. I think it was able to meet you. Yeah, they did that. We got right. cameras. Commissioner Henderson, one more. Commissioner Henderson, we did turn down a certain set of cameras, and there was a legitimate reason for it. It wasn't for me. Well, I know it wasn't for you, but the body did. And, 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 and the Benton Harbor Public Safety Department has come up with another camera and a system that seems to be very good. Um, we're going to be spied on wherever we go, whenever we go. So it's best to, for us to be spied on by our own people than somebody else. But the, it, I don't. For me, it wasn't. It wasn't anything but the system that was being offered to us. So I'm. I've been waiting for the last two months for them to bring these new cameras. Like that one up there, is. Mm -hmm. and they are, from my little P thought, is they're great cameras and a great system. Everybody can look at whatever they want to on their phone, and you can see the, the police department, the fire department, the the mayor, the staff, people can say, oh. Then somebody just went down there and dumped and have a picture of it. Mm -hmm. So we're just waiting on them to bring it. I don't know why it's taking them so long or why it takes so long for anything to happen here. But I'm, I'm waiting for them to present that. Mr. Clark, uh, did, you, did you answer that? It, yeah. So we started the purchase process with them, and they uh, we had everything written up. And it was we're getting ready to submit it, and the company then doubled the price of each camera, <laughs> and it, it, it took it from a reasonable price to an outlandish price. <laughs> so yeah, we're they, going back to the drawing board. They they basically added six hundred dollars each camera. What was your name? Yeah, Vercada. Yeah, that that's what it. Vercada. V e r k a d a. There's other companies that do that, but we just had to go back to the drawing board and find a solution. Okay. That's good. Are you familiar with rain? Like the doorbell people? Yeah. Then we're going to go ahead and move to the next item. Uh, ordinance. Okay, so on Monday there were some concerns about the uh, animal and fowl ordinance and it was asked to be brought back to the committee. Mm -hmm. uh, what were the issues? Uh, my only issue after weighing and measuring uh, this situation is to not discriminate mm -hmm. if, uh, uh, towards those that are trying to live healthy and 
and do what they need to as far as working out in the gym. They have to go out into the township to do that. That's where Plant Planet Fitness is. Um, town versus country. Animals belong in the country. I don't uh, agree with a chicken, whether I'm using them for eggs or whatever. It should be in the country. Because they all make noise. How are you going to discriminate because you like to eat healthy and your chicken making noise because he laying eggs and I got one that I'm walking like a dog and he make a lot of noise too. I mean, a chicken is a chicken, I'm sorry. But uh, I'd ban them all, domesticated and all. If it's not a dog or cat, I mean, we can't ban the deers. Because if it was left up to me, I'd ban the dogs. Would they know not to come up in the hall? We're all animals. <laughs> We're going to ban animals. <coughs> and some people love animals more than they love human anim animals. So, I mean, I know some people got some pot bellies pigs and that is in their house and it's like it is a pet and they love this thing and it's trainable and it comes to you and <laughs> so how do we do if we're going to ban these kind of things how do we grandfather these animals in or and i beg to differ about a chicken uh, yeah a chicken do make noise but it's not a rooster a rooster make a lot of noise. Chickens don't make noise. They cluck, 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 cluck. And you can hear them when it's time for them to lay eggs, they cluck. But to be truthful with you, the corporate farming is killing us. They put the eggs that the chickens produce, the chickens are giving hormones, antibiotics, and all sorts of things because they grow, they grow them in a nasty way. They sit up on top of each other. So whoever on the top tier, they catch all the stoop from, and they eat that. Now they gotta give them antibiotics. The corporate farming is killing us, especially poor people. You go to the store and you get a dozen of eggs for 99 cents, but those eggs are already three months old and you don't know what the chickens were fed with. So I would say chickens, I don't know about, I think it was guinea pigs. No, we took the guinea pigs off. I'm sorry. I. I I should have brought that document with me. But it's a lot of things on there that I, I think that if we regulate it, because right now people got chickens in their backyard. Just for clarification, uh, Mr. Manager, can you kind of move forward with that? Um, the proposed language said no person shall keep or house any animals or domestic fowl within this city limits except for dogs, cats, birds, or animals commonly classified as pets. Um, and then it says, the 9-3 says, no person shall harbor or keep any bees, swine, foxes, goats, horses, mules, cattle, poultry, pigeons, rabbits, pigs, or mink in the city. That's what is prohibited now. That would, would, would be the proposed pro yeah. prohibition would be those those specifically named. Um, I know that there was a question about rabbits and there was a question about uh, uh, pigs. And the thing about it is, you know, honestly, I mean, rabbits are sold at store, at pet stores. We're not, the, the, the aim is not to go after the pet rabbit that's there. If you got a rabbit farm, According, and this is the other thing, according to the 
uh, Right to Farm Act in the state of Michigan, there are certain criteria that have to exist for you to be able to have that farm. Certain dimensions of size on your lot, 250 foot setbacks for zero for 50 to over 50 to 100, and then as it goes up, it incrementally gets bigger. So, in order to accommodate, to in order to be in compliance with the state statute, you have to have more land than we could possibly give you unless you have just like seven or eight lots. So, so there's a balance. Because like I said, if you've got a pet rabbit, that's not a problem. No. If you've got a pet, because I mean, there's pet snakes. There's pet iguana, there's pet lizards that they sell out there. But do you want a farm of them in the city? That's the question. So you're speaking of just breeding. If they're breeding them to sell or whatever, then there's a problem. The, the problem is, Commissioner, if you've got, so in the Right to Farm Act, it says that in order to have chickens, you should have a coop. We got people who got them out of a coop. They just have them outside in the yard with a fence big enough or tall enough to keep them from getting out. They take them inside and then they bring, or they put them in the garage and they bring them out during the day. That's the problem. They don't, they're not doing it the right way. And I know some people have the, the, the belief that the, they want their animals to run free like that. But again, like I said, if that animal gets out, flies off, flies the coop literally, <laughs> then you've got a problem. Because you've got some, again, somebody walks up to it or thinks it's a cute little thing, a little kid. I don't want to have to answer that question. Well, I guess you, I mean, we live in a, this is a city, this is not, I mean, this is a rural area, it's not, not, uh, this is an urbanized area. Yeah, and that's what happened, I mean, uh, even if under the right to farm, you know, me, me living in city limits, uh, 100 by whatever, some lot, I wouldn't want my neighbor having a couple of cows over there, pigs <laughs> running around, you know, in the wind blowing this. You know, smell and stuff over there just because he farming. If you want a farm, go go get a farm. <laughs> and I understand the the, the, the uh, problem with you know the way the food industry is now. People want to grow their own, but you know they might have to go out into a to a rural area to to do that. But you know to live in the city limits, you know I think it's got to be some type of uh, some some guidelines, but. You yeah, there's got to be some guidelines, for sure. Well, it, two chickens, four chickens that lay enough eggs for uh, a family, and they can also share with other people. Um, there's meat to be gathered off of them as well. Um, I just think that 21st century things have changed, and uh, we need to change with them, but we have to put some guidelines there to make sure that the city is protected, the neighbors are protected, uh, and uh, no, you don't want two cows in somebody's backyard or some or two pigs unless they're pets. But I, I looked at so after we got done Monday, um, I looked at a number of ordinances and cities around, they don't allow them. We're not talking about other municipalities. I know when they've had two or three places in in St. Joe, that little 12-year-old girl, she was in the paper crying. She wanted to keep her chicken. She had jumped through all the hoops, got electric uh, fencing and a lot of stuff. And um, we're not talking about so, St. Joe. So what they so St. Joe is an apple and we are pair. So what they did was, Commissioner, they wrote an ordinance that said um, that you cannot have chickens at a residence within 200 feet of a public street, public alley, public place, or within 200 feet of another residential place. You can't have them. Absolutely. <laughs> But so that, if, yeah. that's St. Joe. But we, we, but we're not saying, St. Joe. We've been hiring. What I'm saying is other predominantly African-American places are not having them in the 
I'm not ever going to talk We're to not you. other. We're not other. We are a home rule community, we, and we can be we can be we can sustain ourselves in whatever ways that we want. I, again, it's up to the commission to make the decision. This is a recommendation. Well, if we're going to not grandfather some of these pets in, we're gonna. That's uh, I think it's not going to be a good thing. But even. They got ferrets. They got ferrets. They got meat. They got all sorts of ferrets against the law. Yeah, but they got them here. Yeah, they in violation. They in violation, and I believe a mink is too in violation to have a mink. Uh, so, but it's not in violation to have a pet duck. We had a duck. It was our watchdog. You got dogs that bark all night long and all day long in Benton Harbor. And nobody does anything. We pay Barry County Animal Control and they don't even come out. When they come to our community, they ride through. They already know that 5% of the dogs are not tagged or nothing else. But we are a home rule community. We can set rules to make us sustainable. And that's what we really need to do. This is not business as usual. This is innovative and thinking out of the box for our people. We are in a spiral right now going down because of food. Thank you. Uh, three <laughs> comments. Uh, just, just real quick. Um, I am a person, I wanted some chicken. I almost bought some a couple months ago because I got food you feed them and that kind of thing. My husband was a hard no. He's like, no, he, he didn't just say no, he used other words, no. And, and, and I um, did not do that. But I understand the, the need or want to raise chickens. But next to my neighbor, it would not have been fair for me to have chickens in my backyard as close as I am. Uh, to my neighbor and raising little four little chickens in my backyard and creating this little space and she could see that it's not fair It wouldn't have been fair to them if people want to raise chickens and animals They may just have to move into a township or area. we can't grant we can't be a city just allows everything Just everything goes on in the city of Ben Harbor because we are home rooms home rule city And we can do what we want to do so lawlessness is the is the law of the land. We can't do that You to just let law. people no, we make the laws where people always seem to violate them or to go over them or assume something. We, we have to set limits on things. And I think this in, in this particular case, we're allowing people because we have to based on the state statutes. We're just limiting what those things are. So we can't stop them but uh, because of uh, the farming uh, rule, but we can put limits on it. That's all we're doing with this. That's all we're doing with this particular thing. My comment on it is that uh, you know, the way it is, you know, I, I can see it, but uh, since we are, like you said, homebrew city, and you know, I think maybe it should go to a vote of the people. You know, there's some type of referendum must be on the ballot to say, you know, if you want some pigs and hogs, you know, and if, the, if the people vote it, then they can vote it. But, you know, the, I think the sit there and make a decision to say, you know, to, to allow some of it, uh, uh, that'd be a hard decision to make, you know. Yeah, but we might want to let people go trash. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Yeah. We might want to stop doing trash. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, uh, Can we put a grandfather clause in there for kids? Sir, sure. you know, and I think most of the case, if it becomes a nuisance, you want to have something to be able to uh, uh, leverage with, you know, if it's not a nuisance, no, you know, if it's not a nuisance, nobody know nothing. Then it, evidently they're doing a good, correct job to cover it up. But if it become a nuisance and you don't have any laws to right. enforce, then that's when you when you have a problem. So and that's that's the genesis for this was that there was a nuisance that has been created mm -hmm. by having them in the city. So you you have residents that are crying out, help us. Because we've got a nuisance in our in our neighborhood, how are we going to fix it? But again, 
Like what that's just are you speaking of? Oh, it's a couple of them. <laughs> um, what you, yeah, you got some over on Hastings. You got some over on Bishop. You got some over in the Columbus, Britain area. Yeah, they're they're popping up all over the city. What? What chickens? Chickens. chickens. These people have chickens. a whole farm chickens. on Empire and one of the, it's a yellow house. In the back, they have a whole coop back there. Exactly. They're a, a Hispanic family because we they believe in that and I agree with that. But they right there on Empire and I know because I work for the government. And I had to go to the house for something. And yes, mm -hmm. they have a whole coop. It's a whole correct <laughs> a whole stand of animals back there with a little thing, a cage, and everything built. You wouldn't yeah. know it because they are, but they, those roosters are disturbing people. Yeah, so that that's what that again was the, the purpose or the genesis behind this was that you had a cry from your residents that said, "We've got a we've got a problem. Can you help us fix it?" Can we put a grandfather clause in there if they have a pet in their house? We don't want to somebody say, "Oh." Miss so and so got a, a pet pig in our house, mm -hmm. and the ordinance says that you can't have a pig. Can we put a grandfather clause in it that if there's a pet, chicken, duck, or whatever it is, and they do love their animals? <laughs> well, it is one that says, failure of the owner, caretaker, or custodian to maintain in a clean and sanitary condition. The void of you know, so there are provisions in there for that. If they if they violate those rules, then we have a right to cite them. And that's so what that's, it, that's what, what it becomes a nuisance. It becomes a nuisance, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So there are provisions. But if it don't be, never come a, a nuisance, then nobody's complaining. Correct. Yeah. So you need to have something. So when it do become a nuisance, you can have something to absolutely to use. You know, so uh, we'll go ahead and move this to. Back to the commission. Okay, done. Next, you ready for the next one? Yeah. Okay, next item was the ordinance on the mobile food units, and there was an issue with the, uh, the what was in there who was convicted of a felony. So I went back and I looked at it, and that's only for purposes of revocation. So you, so it says under here, that code compliance shall revoke the license of any operator of a mobile food unit who ceases to meet the requirements of this article, who commits fraud, misrepresentation, or makes a false statement on their application, or in the course of operating a mobile food unit, who is convicted of a felony. So it's only for the purposes of revocation. If the act is committed. If the act is committed while they have a mobile food unit. It is not to prevent people who go into business from having a food unit, a mobile food unit, food truck. It's not what this is. If you commit a felony during the time that that happened, then you have, you're subject to replication. Gotcha. That's that's what it was. But I, you, but again, you fix it so when somebody else reads it, they won't think it well, says if you're a felon, you're gonna. Well, can't do it. I, if I'm gonna say this, I'll say it like this. You, you know, there's different interpretations of the Bible. But if you read it in context, you get a better understanding. But if you want to focus on just one place to make it applicable to what you're talking about, that's what it'll be. But in context of what this is under the heading, yeah. that's what it's about. Because yeah. it yeah. says revocation. Revocation right at the top. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Any more questions on that? We'll move that back to the uh, commission. All right. That was your last <laughs> yes. uh, Thank y'all for coming. <laughs> we, we, we talked a couple months ago about Jean Clark Park and the bees. Uh -huh. uh, we just approved something that was just unbelievable in Jean Clark Park for five years. And uh, we need to uh, we need to look at what we're gonna do with our parks. We need to look at the bees again. We're late. The yeah. park will be open in five or six days or tomorrow. Which park? Jean Clark it's Park. It's already open. Oh, it's already yeah, open. Yeah, and and uh, with the fees and stuff. Let's, if that was okay with that was the, personnel and finance. Personnel and finance. Right. Yeah. Week, right? Chair, yeah. Next week. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So every year we're going to look at the fees? 
the way the way it's written is that's what it's reviewed on a, on an annual basis. Yeah. So please understand that that's going to take some time now, Commissioner, because there are a lot of them. A lot of fees. A lot of fees. Yeah, from everything from um, getting uh, copies of, of documents to renting the beaches to all that stuff. It's it's probably six pages worth of fees. There's a lot of fees. Now, what what I'm going to suggest is that we focus on the ones that are kind of outlandish or egregious and focus on those versus trying to go through the whole, because it says a dollar a page for copies of documents. That's pretty much the company standard. So we don't need to really kind of focus on those, but those that are kind of outlandish that we, for, like I said, I know the vending one. Is that my book? I found it from that's, that's mine. Okay, that's where it is. Um, the vending fees are one that we need to look at. We need to look at the mobile food unit fees. Those are all document things that we need to talk about. So we won't smirch your time. Yeah, personal friends. <laughs> are we going to talk about anything about the parks before the winter comes? The parks. Uh, what? All they, parks. Yep. Oh, uh, yeah, well. Yeah. Is it gonna come through this committee yeah. or is it gonna it's come gonna through? It's gonna probably yeah, it will come through here probably <laughs> in the next, on the next one. Yeah, the next because one. um 